Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise His sweet holy name. Holy is the Lord, mighty is His name. God bless you, baby. Love him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Well, we're happy to be back again tonight. Each one of us standing in post to duty. Man. Man. Got a promise? We are the royal, not just the seed of Abraham, but we are the royal seed of Abraham, Amen. the father of the faith, yes. that staggered not at the promise of God, and when his body was yet dead, his wife's body was yet dead, and there was no natural hope, no hope in sight, no hope in sight. But he staggered not at the promise of God, no, no, no. but was not only faith, but the Bible said he staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith, Amen. giving Amen. glory to God, yes, sir. Amen. that no matter how old Sarah was, yes. Amen. Uh, Amen. he was 75, her milk veins just dried up, her womb was dead, huh? All seats over. How you feel this morning, sir? Oh, not too good, Abraham. How are you, honey? <laughs> well, glory to God, he said it anyway. Oh, I guess it is a, sure was a fanatic message. Can you just hear it just like about his day? Oh, Brother Abraham's up there yes, yes. telling all them people that Sarah's going to have a baby. Yes. Now, anybody all know she's too old for that. Never yes. talked Abraham out of it, though. Amen. He didn't pay no attention to whatever anybody else was saying. No, sir. But he was strong in faith. Hallelujah. That's the same thing we're doing today. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Everybody making fun of it, say it's too late, the prophet's come and gone, and that's all of it, and it's too late, you can't have revival, you can't have the power of God, but we're staggering out the promise of God. God said he'd have a church, God said he'd have a powerful bride here, he said he'd have power here to do these things, and we're not staggering out. And we're not, we're not getting weak. We're not getting discouraged. We're getting stronger every week. Stronger every week. God says that. God says that. But it's 1973. God says that. Oh, he said he'd be here, and I love him, and he promised that I'm waiting on him. And he's coming, coming in power to back up his word. No. 
Unless somebody's there declaring he's coming. How's he gonna how's he gonna back up his words? Nobody's preaching his words. How's he gonna do the thing that he promised if he can't get nobody to believe it? All he needs is a handful of foolish people to believe it. that can baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire is right here in the building. Amen. Amen. The one that made the promise is here to confirm the promise. How do you know what will happen tonight? You don't know what will happen here. Just think, one of these days you'll occupy that seat and it'll happen. Well, how many things is wonderful to be made fun of? Abraham didn't care what everybody said. Lot didn't believe him. None of the brethren believed him. None of the other churches believed it. Him and Sarah just stood up there, stayed up there under the old oak tree. Just waited on it. What we're doing. Staggered not at the promise of God, but we're strong in faith, worshiping and glorifying God, saying, Here we are, Lord. You said it. We believe it. We're waiting on it. Nobody else wants it. Nobody else wants it, but we want it. Everybody said, Oh, we got the Holy Ghost. And Lambert up there telling them people nobody's born again, nobody's got the Holy Ghost. Why, you know we all got the Holy Ghost. You have? Never have felt this presence, let alone been filled. Don't even know what the presence of the Lord is. But his presence has now come down. But Jesus Christ is not, he is now present tense of on the earth. And his spirit, our spirit bears witness that with his spirit that it's so. We see it in his word. We see it confirmed before us, the revealed word of God. We feel his presence. And we know that it's time for him to confirm the promise. Yes, yes. Oh my, it's just wonderful. I, I'm just so happy I can't hold it. Wonderful. Just waiting on it. Oh. Just think how great it is. Two thousand years people have preached about the Holy Ghost, talked about the Holy Ghost. Millions of churches have been built. Right. All kinds of ministries raised up until there's hundreds of thousands of them today. 500 professing Christians, 500 million professing Christians in the world. 
I don't know how many million, uh, about a hundred million, I claim, uh, claim to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's claim to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Like they said in California, you, about Brother Brown's prophecy, do places as those men said, do you think that God would thank California when he has a million, a two million Holy Ghost filled saints here? They said they were sold to go to the Lord never. Amen. It makes a lot of difference. We'll see. Oh, but it's so wonderful to know that you and I are here tonight because God said that he would have a church just exactly like they had on the day of Pentecost. Not just by name, but by word and deed. And you and I are gathered here for that tonight. No other reason. We're gathered here tonight to show God. We judge ourselves by the Word of God. Amen. We see that we're short of these Amen. things. And we want to possess what we're talking about. Amen. Lord, we want you to do for us what you did for them on the day of We want to prove that you have rose from the dead. And God is honoring that. He's honoring our faith. He's honoring that, and he's revealing his word to us, and he's blessing us by his spirit. And he is encouraging us every day, every week. He's encouraging us to press on. How many's encouraged? I don't want to go on talk about Abraham, but I, the Lord willing, will look in the Bible here again in Revelation 13. I hope this is helping Sister Sawyer and her little friend. Some of those others that come in in the late hour are Spanish folks. We're very happy to have the word to preach in this hour. Feed hungry souls and come our way. God's will lead them. Amen. We have to have the eagle food. Amen. Now, we're not speaking upon so much as divine revelation in the past uh, two or three Sundays, but we're just trying to teach the Scripture as it's laying in the Word, trying to teach us to see how these things are transpiring or taking place right before the very eyes. And uh, I didn't mean to get into that this morning about the seventh week of Daniel, and I hope you understand what I said this morning. Uh, it, it really... As I said, it doesn't pertain to your salvation or my salvation. Whether or not it's three and a half years or whether or not it's seven years, uh, it's nothing to, to be all upset about it. But however, since we had that scripture before us this morning, uh, I just kind of feel at this time, unless the Lord has some way that he can reveal it, there's some scripture laying here that would unfold it and make it some other way which could be, uh, because I said I don't have no, uh, the Holy Spirit never came to me, showed me about the 70 weeks of Daniel, or I'd have the word of the Lord on I wouldn't guess about it, but I was just reading it like it was to you this morning, and I know you have posted upon the prophet's message, you followed the prophet of God just like I did for many years, laid hopes on everything that he said. And so we, we don't turn loose of anything that he said, unless we see it by a revelation Amen. Or that Brother Branham, for some reason or other, said it that way. But as I said this morning, <clears throat> and you, I'm not the kind of a pastor that's afraid for you to find something on tape or something Amen. in the book right. or find something that would make me wrong. Right. I want to be made wrong if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong in anything that I'm teaching, it would be the greatest thing in my life, that if the Lord through somebody would help me, show me where I'm wrong. I'd like that. But, but uh, we want to say what the Word says. And Brother Branham taught the 70 weeks of Daniel, and he taught for hours and hours and hours, and I followed very closely, he taught there was one week left to the Jews. Now, personally, <coughs> I believe that uh, it'll more than likely, as I see it, be seven years because I can't find any scriptures to make it the other way. But nevertheless, if you find it, let me know 
and I, if I find it, I'll let you know. But it's this far, I looked for seven years allotted to the Jews. And of course, as I said this morning, and you're posted in the scriptures and these things, it's going to make a tremendous difference in the way that uh, things are going. Because everybody's been taught a three and a half year, uh, uh, three and a half year period left for the Jews. Now that doesn't mean, I don't believe, that doesn't mean that the, uh, uh, the tribulation period will be seven years. But the 70th week will be seven years. Amen. And I am not positive at this time. I don't have any understanding on that. And while I'm at it, I don't claim, I hope I don't give that impression. I hope I don't, that I'm a know-it-all. I don't want to ever give that impression I'm a know-it-all. But I just preach what revelation God gives me. And since uh, we start off in Revelation 13, I have to just go on and say things that I don't have no revelation on. But just reading it by the scriptures, I don't think we'll go wrong with that. Amen. But uh, I'm not positive. I'm not positive. But now, understand that Brother Brown never taught the millennium. Maybe later on, I'm going to teach on the millennium just because no revelation on it. Because as I said, my message is not, my message that God gives me has nothing to do with the trumpet, with the trumpets, the vials, the plagues. God don't deal with me in that. More than likely, you'll not hear me preach none of those things because they don't pertain to the bride. More than likely, Moses and Elijah will preach that to the Jews because that's more to the Jews. <clears throat> my, you know what my message is. But nevertheless, I'll pick up what things I can here to try to help you uh, see it because I, how many are interested in it? Uh, I, I, the way that I say things, I say them. Uh, the reason I'm saying seven weeks is because I can run the continuity of the scripture straight that way. It's not a lot of people, and you know the motive of my heart, I don't think that there's any man on earth that loves Brother Brandon more than I do. Amen. Because God honored me. He honored me and gave me the revelation of Amen. his message that I say humbly that no other man on earth has. Uh, if he did, well, then something did wrong. But so I love Brother Brandon. Why Brother Brandon said those things that he said, I don't know. I really couldn't say, but it'll all work out for the good. And uh, I wouldn't want anybody to think that I was contradicting the prophet because one minister doesn't contradict another prophet because they they go in continuity continuity with what God is saying. But we're looking for a seven year period left to the Jews. Now that's going to make a tremendous change. Then if that's so, then we can look more than likely, as I said this morning, for another war to break out. Of course, the Mosque of Omer's got to come down there. Now we found this morning by reading the scriptures, just by reading the scriptures, that the temple was to be rebuilt. The Jews would have their own church come into the world council of the churches, come under the reign of the one world church. They would offer up their own sacrifice. We found out this morning that there would be a covenant made with the Jews Amen. by the Catholics. Amen. Did not the head of the state of Israel go to Nier? Did she not go Amen. visit the Pope? You don't know what they said in private, Amen. do you? Well, we see it coming already, don't we? We see the Orthodox Jews, are, they're crying for, to get back to the law of Moses. They're crying to get back to sacrifice. Amen. They know they can't sacrifice unless unless they get the place to sacrifice. Amen. So if the temple is going to be built, they haven't started on it, that takes time. Amen. Forty-six years it took to build the first temple. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Would you like to be around another 15 years? Don't get scared. Don't get scared now. 
I don't believe this is going to take 46 no. years to build. Uh, you know, they could get enough help on it to put it up pretty quick now. Yes, amen. But nevertheless, the temple has got to be built. It's going to take a little time to do that, right? Yes. It's going to take a little time to build a temple. It's going to take time to have another war to get the other tore down. Is that right? So we can watch these things as they begin to take place. As you pick up little things in the U.S. news and on the radio and watch the news, Want it through your heart as you see these things fitting together? As you see the ten toes beginning to move up, take form on the uh, end of the world? As you watch world commerce? As you watch the, the people begin to clamor for peace? And they are. They begin to clamor for a one world government where they can't have any wars. Is that right? And as you see these things taking place, we'll see how they begin to fit in with the Jew when we see it already. So... Now let's read for scripture tonight, uh, continue on Revelation 13, and I, I won't be able to hear, I can't finish it all tonight, so we're not in no hurry. Let's, uh, we'll read verse 5, and we finished verse 5 this morning on 42 months, didn't we? And there was given unto him, verse 5 of Revelation 13, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Now forty and two months, that's three and a half years. Right. Now he's talking about, he's not uh, just talking here about now the seventieth week. You just can't say, well, three and a half years, that's the seventh week, and take this and prove the seventieth week. We already read over, we already read this morning over Daniel 9 and 26 and 27 that there was. Seventy weeks, they used up sixty-nine, but it was in three parts. There was sixty-two weeks, and then there was a, a sixty-two weeks, and then there was a, a seven-week period and a one-week period. Yes. It's in three parts. Yes. Amen. The two parts has already transpired. We only have one week left for the Jews. It did not say a half a week. It said one week. And said, in the midst of that week, there would be a covenant confirmed by the prince, which is Antichrist. Is that right? Yeah. Which we believe to be the pope. He will be the pope that's ruling at that time. More than likely, it won't be this one. But as we said, from a prophecy of Brother Branham, I take it off of a prophecy of Brother Branham, that there will be a pope taken out of America, put over there according to Bible prophecy. More than likely, it be American pope. Then that will be the that man will be the man of sin. He'll be the Judas incarnated, and he'll be the beast. But now notice he doesn't become the beast Amen. until the last half Amen. of the seventh yes. week. Amen. But he will be a nice brother. Yes. He will be a wonderful person. Yes. He'll be a nice brother. Yes. He'll be a slicker. Amen. He'll be a great preacher. Yes. He'll be a great orator. Amen. He'll win the world with flattery. Yes. He'll cause craft to prosper. Yes. He'll bring it out of the presence. Yes. Yes. He'll give everybody a chicken in every pot again. Yes. Isn't that what the Bible said? Don't you forget it. The love of money is still the root of all evil. Take the bread and butter away, and you'll be surprised how people act. And all they hate him as the savior of the world. But he'll be a nice man. He'll win the world by flattery. He'll win the public by flattery. But them not knowing, the world not knowing it, that it's the devil himself. It's those split foot himself. Hidden down in some good looking, maybe a fine, handsome yeah. pope that the world just loves. And this is a holy man of God. Yeah. This is the Savior of the world. Yeah. He not only saved America from national bankruptcy, but he has brought the whole world together. Right. What a great thing he's done. Yeah. We lost the jobs, we lost our homes. Yeah. We didn't have no work or nothing. It looked terrible. Yeah. But now he's saved. Jesus said, uh huh, I came in my own name, you receive him not, receive me not, but another will come in his own name, him you receive. Oh, but he'll be a wonderful man at first, won't he? Now, 
You see, now right there it shows. Now if he come on the scene as the beast, yes. the three and a half years, if it was on three and a half years, he'd have to immediately come on the scene as the beast. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Now how's it going to be a wonderful man be the beast too? Amen. How's it going to come on and be a wonderful man and just start killing and slaughtering? No, no. no, he doesn't do that. No. He comes in peaceably. Amen. He comes in preaching peace. Amen. He comes in with a message. He comes in with a great mouth that he's able to influence the great orators of the world. Amen. He's able to influence the government. Amen. He's able to influence all the power. Amen. And he's able to influence the Jews. Amen. Amen. He's able to influence the Jews and he makes a covenant with them. For seven years. He's going to make a covenant for the seven year period that he'll be ruling and reigning. But in the midst of that week, in the midst of that week, which is three and one half years, he turns into the beast. Now, let's look at verse 6. There's 42 months now speaking about the beast. We're speaking about the dragon, the beast, right? Dragon and the beast. There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things. Blasphemies and power was given. Blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. Now notice there, brother and sister, I never noticed that. Said, now, see, he's given a mouth, right? Speaking great things. Now that's the beginning. That's the beginning. But it said, and power was given unto him to continue. <laughs> now that makes a big difference. I never saw that. <laughs> see, there he started out. He had got a seven-week period. Now he wins the world with flattery. Is that right? He wins the world with flattery. Becomes the savior of the world. Right? The wonderful man, the wonderful pope, oh my. All the churches go back to unite with the Catholic Church. We got a one world government. And even the Pope is receiving the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Like most of us saying that, you know. Huh? And they're speaking in tongues because some of the bishops have never said, uh, the bishops and the ecumenical council there uh, told you, person in, said, while we speak in tongues, we're seeking God, we're hungry for God. Said, we need the gift of the Spirit like the early church had. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then uh, Pentecostals get the Catholics down, get them speaking in tongues. They say even the Pope will get it for us over. Yes. Now the Bible said, there was given unto him power Amen. to continue on. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now if it means to continue, it must have already been doing something. Yes. Amen. Amen. There was given him power to continue on for 42 months, that's three and one half years. Amen. But now when he gets the power, when he gets the power, now he turns, now let's see what, let's just see, let's read the next scripture here. Now how many understand it so far? Yes, and he opened his mouth, uh-huh, and blasphemy against God. Now he's changing, isn't he? Yes. Now he's opened his mouth and blasphemy against God. Mm. To blaspheme his name. Don't look like he likes the name of Jesus too much. No. Amen. Huh? Did, did you ever hear the Pope ever saying it about the Lord Jesus Christ? No. No, when they talk, they talk about the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. You'll, never, you'll never find them talking about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the Trinitarian. The Trinitarian Pentecostals all the time talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Did you know the devil's traveling the three high names of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Right. Demons and the devil travels in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Right. Amen. The Pope, when the uh, when the Catholics, when the, the bishop there, when they said uh, the inauguration of President Kennedy, how many seen that? All the, all the bishops, all that they would say in the name of the Father in Latin, see, and in English too, they say in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son, chanting those things in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in the name of the. Boy, the preacher's playing her word. <laughs> they don't realize that, but that's the deal. Yeah. See, and that's just calling demons in, boy, just pack them in there. See. Them demons just riding in on that vibration of that. See. And uh, even though uh, I haven't been to any of them, 
But Brother Branham said when he went into the, the, the Holy Spirit, sent him one night into a place where they was uh, practicing uh, devil worship. And these seance meetings, and they was raising tables, and the, the trumpet was floating around in the air, and a voice was speaking out. But it was saying, I'm the Father, and I'm the Son, and I'm the Holy Ghost, and all that. And Brother Branham went in there, and that voice said, we have an unbeliever here. <laughs> Said, we, wait a minute, said, we've got an unbeliever here. And everybody, and everybody went to looking around at Brother Brandon. And, and he, he stood up and said, yes, that's right. He said, I am an unbeliever. And he said, I charge you, whoever you are speaking, said, I charge you in the name. No, he, at first he didn't say the name. He said, I charge you in the name of the Father to tell me what your name is, this boy speaks. Nothing in Satan, nothing. He said, I charge you in the name of the Son. Tell me if this is God doing this. Wouldn't say anything. He said, in the name of the Holy Ghost, tell me if this is God doing these things. Wouldn't say anything. He said, then I thought I'd try that wonderful name I said. <laughs> He said, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, this table is hanging up there, still up there. And he said, I charge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, tell me if this is God or not. He said, it's not, it's not. He said, I thought I'd just go a little further and try that name of Jesus and rebuke the table and it just collapsed. So the devil travels in titles of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Right. So that's why that the Catholics, when they inaugurated President Kennedy, that's why that they did that. Never mentioned the name of Jesus. But here this man begins to blaspheme the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And his tabernacle. Now, begins to blaspheme his tabernacle. Now, where, what is his tabernacle? Well, there's two things. Yes. Two things that could be. That's either the temple that's built where the Jews are worshiping, Amen. or it's, the, and it could be both, the natural place where Jesus, where the Jews are worshiping, or the 144,000 that he's weathering. Yes, sir. Right? He begins to blaspheme the tabernacle and the name of Jesus and also then to dwell in heaven. He must really been pouring it on. Some people have been on earth, you know, it went on to heaven. Verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Now when is it given to him to make war with the saints? During the reign of 42 months, in the midst of the week now, in the midst of the week, all at once this wonderful person Amen. gets up one morning and he's completely another person out. He begins to blaspheme the tabernacle, begins to blaspheme the name of Jesus, begins to talk about those that are in heaven. Now what's he doing? Now he's changing his message. He's changing his message now and is beginning to preach against the things of God. Before, he was letting the Jews go on with their own religion. Sure, letting them to worship the Lord the way they want to. Yes. He was letting the, the Baptists worship the way they wanted to, the Methodists and the Presbyterians and the Church of Christ and the Pentecostals. But now he begins to preach against these things. Begins to change. See, how many see that? Amen. And he began, now he's got power, he's got enough power. All the nations give him such power and such authority now that now he takes upon himself to persecute the saints. Right. Now we've got a question here. The saints, now who are they? Well, it's certainly not you and I. Right. Certainly not you and I because we're gone. We're already off the earth now. So he's persecuting the saints, it must be the 144,000. The 144,000 that was sealed by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the seal of God. Right? 
So now he begins to persecute the 144,000. Now let's look here. He begins to make war with the saints. Then he begins to overcome them. Begins to kill them. And power was given him over all kindred, tongues, and nations. Brother, you're talking about power and authority. He's got it. He's got enough power and authority now, and he does what he wants to do. And he begins to kill and martyr. Begins to kill and mar martyr saints. Now remember over in Daniel, I believe it's 6, uh, Daniel 5 or 6 there, we read where the, this Antichrist, this man of sin, this prince, this little horn that was come, he would speak peacefully and flattery and, and uh, have a great voice to speak and would give him, be given a great mouth. And then all at once he said he began to destroy wonderfully. So it'd be just wonderful how he killed people. Now you know what I think was the way that that was expressed for the prophet that he'll begin to to, to destroy wonderfully. I thought, well, that's a terrible word to use with killing people. He began to destroy people wonderfully. It's just wonderful how he done it. Let me tell you something. That Pope will be so, so filled with the devil, he'll lay awake at night thinking of, of, of all kinds of terrible ways to kill people. Amen. He'll lay awake and contrive some of the most wicked, diabolical things to persecute and kill people that ever was. Until it'll be just right down wonderful how he'll think of so many ways to torture you and persecute you and, and, and kill you. I'd like to give you an example of it, and of course, this, uh, the little children and everything, it's kind of terrible to talk about, but sometimes it kind of shocks us, uh, but uh, it's the truth anyhow, uh, of how during this, how this spirit, during the dark ages, uh, in the time of the martyr, the time of St. Martin and Irenaeus and down through there, this spirit that'll be upon the Pope. The ways and the means that he thought up of how to torture and kill people. They ripped uh, women that was carrying their little ones pregnant, ripped them out, took the babies right out of the womb, throwed them right up in the air and caught them on, on swords, took the little children by the heels and bashed the brains out, uh, took women, tied one leg to one horse and one leg to the other, and hit the horses and rip them right in two with men also took men pegged them down to the ground and turned wild hogs in on them and let them eat their entrails and stomach and everything out from the back oh, of course no no the catholic thing i told good catholics that i don't believe it i said do you believe george washington well sure i believe george washington why do you believe george washington well history tells so i said sir we got history just as authentic as George Washington that say that the Catholics done this. Amen. And the Bible says that that system of Catholicism is filled with this of what Jesus said. The Revelation 17 and Revelation 18 said she is filled Amen. with all of the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Amen. And you mean to tell me that you and I are going to bow down this Amen. ecumenical thing no, when no. she's drunk with all the blood no, of the saints? No. Will everyone stand and give our blood to the living? We'll, uh, we're no better than they are, and we'll if it. And I don't know that it won't, but if it comes to a place, I want. I, I'd rather see my whole congregation martyred before my eyes, Amen. and I'll stand there and encourage them in the faith. Amen. We will not bow down to such an uh, ungodly, satanic, devil worship as that. Amen. They may have forgotten about all the blood of our Jesus, but Jesus hasn't. Amen. He is ready to reward her for her evil deeds. No, we will not do it. No, sir. So it shows here that these saints, that this this beast is going to be so diabolically filled with the devil that he'll lay awake at night figuring out means to torture and persecute the, the, the saints to try to get them to denounce their faith. My, my friend, the, tonight, there is no word in the vocabulary to coin, there's no letters in the alphabet 
to form a word in your vocabulary to explain to you how horrible this man was. Right. And he will have all of the power of the governmental world back of him, and you will that people will have no help from no way and no further. He will destroy wonderfully, Daniel said. He would destroy wonderfully. It would be just wonderful how he'd think of uh, such horrible things to do to the women and to the men. Mm -hmm. but, but I don't believe the mind could conceive tonight the things that this man will contrive to do to cause the people to renounce their faith and believe in Catholicism. How many want to go in the rapture? Amen. 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 God deliver us from that, and thank Amen. God that he will deliver us. We won't be. Yes. Amen. Now you can see that it's going to look real bad for you. Yes. Now let's turn real, uh, if you'll turn back over to Revelation 12 just a minute, and we'll read another scripture on it. Let's start reading in verse uh, Revelation 12. I finished uh, Revelation 12 down to 10th verse, down to 12th verse. Let's read verse 13. How many just like to read this in the good old blessed Bible? Yes, Lord. Amen. And when the dragon, now that's the old Roman spirit, right? Saw that he was cast into the earth. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Right? Now we found out who was the woman. The woman in the sun had the had the, the moon under her feet. I had the moon under her feet, right? And the, the sun over her head Amen. had 12 stars, which is 12 of apostles. She was, the Jewish church was fading out, and the apostolic church was setting in, right? Yes. Now, verse 13, And when the dragon saw he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness unto her place where she is nourished for a time and time and a half a time from the face of the serpent. Amen. Now we know the woman's a church. Amen. Now when you think of this, that don't mean that there was just thousands and thousands and thousands of people. It's the seed. You got to think of this as the seed. Yes. Because they may not have been just uh, uh, a few really true born again saints of that hour that this is talking about. I mean, really had faith that was really trusting in the Lord, that was really God's children, that was fleeing from Catholicism. Now, <clears throat> we don't have much to go on this, and I haven't went back and searched out history because, as I said, it's not my message. But I believe that if we went back in history and searched it out, it may take a little time, but we could find just exactly by history how that when in Europe, when in Europe, the, the church, the woman, the church, yes. the seed, yes. how God's children, God's seed, see the seed to what we got right now has been coming all the way down through every age. Yes. God has had an elected, elected bride in every age. Yes. Went down to the ground, went down the ground, went down the ground every age. See? Now that kept coming on down, right? Down through the dark ages. Come down to the time now, the same spirit, the same Roman spirit, this old spirit of Romanism, the spirit of the devil, see, called the dragon, see, persecuting the church. And now the persecution got so hot in Europe, we didn't know that there was an America. Amen. We didn't know nothing. Those things, we didn't know that there's a great wilderness over here on the other side of the ocean in Europe. But different explorers began to find it out. That there was land over there somewhere. They're trying to begin to, different ones begin to believe that the world was round. And, and finally, they discovered America. Yeah. Columbus uh, discovered America. And then, at that time, see how God let that be known? Right. Yeah. The church under such persecution, Romanism, was, uh, Catholicism got, got so powerful in Europe that there would be no flesh saved alive over there. And so God reserved for them a land over here in America. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Right. Yes, Jesus. And he let uh, Columbus and the man before it was some of you history students here, what was I can't remember. Huh? 
Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> I wish I'd have said it now and been right. <laughs> you know, I don't have much history. But, see, here God all the time had this wonderful land over here, and it just so happened to let this man on this little wooden boat like a cork on the big ocean. Well, that's a miracle how they ever got that boat over there. I got a boat with a V8 motor and I don't want to get out of side land. You might hear the sailing all over the water and here they find this beautiful land. The news go back to you. The next thing you know what? The Spirit of God moves up on the church. And the church, the seed, a handful of them get to these boats. Now they're dying like flies. They're just standing and being martyred one right after another. By Catholicism. Right? That's what history says. Now look now look here. Let's just look at this. Now to this woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. Into her place. Where she is nourished for time, times, and a half a time from the face of the serpent. Now watch here. Now I believe with all my heart that that wilderness, and I think uh, Brother Branham said this, but Brother Branham never talked much about Revelation 12, maybe just a few statements. But this wilderness of America was the place where, remember how we came? That's why the Constitution was all founded up, founded up on the Bible. Yeah. Well, our whole Constitution and all the men that formed it were Christians. Amen. They never even met in the Congress or in the Senate unless they opened their Bible and prayed and, left the seat, and they left the seat vacant for the Lord Jesus. To set there. And now they're too even ashamed outside of a, a couple of Southerners. They're too ashamed to even mention Jesus Christ. And they wouldn't think of praying. Uh, that's a lot different than early fathers, wasn't it? But they come over here as Christians. Is that right? The pilgrims come over here as Christians. They come over here in love of the Lord, to serve the Lord. They come over here for freedom of religion. That's this woman fleeing from the serpent. Came over here in the wilderness, and what did they do? The, the wilderness was the great, and the ocean was the great. That the, the flood of, the flood that was coming out at the flood of Catholicism and the people of Catholicism that was coming out the martyr, the wilderness just swallowed them up. In other words, they couldn't get to them any longer. Now ain't that wonderful? The Lord saved America for us. Now ain't, ain't it awful that our government has forgotten that? Do you think it's an accident that that little uh, person sang that song and I have to cry like a baby every time I hear it? God bless America. America, America. God bless America. God bless America. Why did God bless America? God blessed America because it was the land that was uh, prepared for the church. It was a wilderness prepared for the church of Jesus Christ to flee to from Catholicism. And here we are today. We're the seed of our brothers that come over here running from Catholicism. And you mean that these backslidden Pentecostals and these backslidden Methodists and backslidden Baptists are going to go right into that whole pen that killed our brothers and we ran from them? Well, far be it from me. I'd rather see my whole family martyred and my whole church martyred before mine. Right. Amen. How many going to stand fast? Yes. No. We'll not do it. No, the wilderness, no. she came, uh, had the wings of a great eagle to fly into the wilderness, unto her place where she is nourished for time, times and a half, from the face of the serpent. Now, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water. See? Now, cast out of his mouth water. Now, we know it's not no serpent, right? No serpent going to cast water out of his mouth. So what is this spirit? Out of his mouth, he's casting forth people. He's used his mouth to send a multitude of people. Over in Revelation 17, 14, or 17, 12, I believe it was, it said, 
that the waters that thou sawest are multitudes of nations, peoples, and tongues. Children, so this water that come out of the serpent's mouth was the subject of the Pope that was martyred. Amen. See, if uh, uh, you know, you can read it history where if you martyred somebody and done it for the Lord, you was given great reward, great hero. Well, I don't marvel, didn't the Bible say they kill you, think they did God a favor? In other words, they killed you, you heretic, they killed you some, uh, because they did God a favor. That's some favor in you. Suffering cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, see, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. Thank God for America. The people was just eating her up, taking her away where she wasn't no more. But the earth helped the church for that they couldn't get to her no more, see. The earth opened up its mouth, her mouth, swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Just couldn't get to her in the USA no more, brother and sister. Now, notice we get right in, we we'll drop right down, just prove it and go right on with it. Revelation 13 here, see. And the dragon was lost with the woman. Now, see, it's not just, it's not following, uh, just, uh, I mean, God, there's no, uh, like, and John, he was seeing things maybe to be hundred years of gap in between. Now this great gap here from verse 13 to verse 16 and verse 17, there's a big wide gap. And the dragon was lost with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now notice here, this dragon, this spirit, of yes. Catholicism yes. is going to be wrathful against the bride. Amen. Amen. He is going to get mad at the bride. But notice now, we know that when he begins to persecute the bride, we're going to be around very long. Yes. Now, I'm going to show you right here that there is a rising of persecution as sure as the word. How many believe that? Yes. There is a rising of persecution. The dragon was lost with the woman church and went to make war now watch here went to make war with the women of her seed now that's that's a different group there yes. Yes. the woman of the church the bride right went to make war with the women of her seed all right now brother Brandon taught it this way now thank you there's no other better way to teach the remnant now you got a uh you got two classes of, of people that belong to the Lord. Amen. You got the cream of the crop, the wise virgin, and you got the foolish virgin. You got the, the bride, and you got the foolish virgin. Yes. Now notice the foolish virgin is the remnant. That's right. Now notice here, the bride is a pattern, right? Amen. She's a pattern, Amen. and Brother. she's the cream of the crop. She's made like unto Christ, the bridegroom. Now he, he's got all the material laid out down here on earth. All the people, Boy. you and I, bride and the foolish virgin, right? There's five wise virgins, five foolish virgins, Matthew 25. Amen. So there's five wise virgins, five foolish virgins. Five didn't have any oil and five had oil. Five was wise and five was foolish. Why was the five foolish brother born? Because they failed to see that they didn't have the spirit. Yes. The wise was wise because there was a wise servant there telling them that they didn't have no oil. Yes. And so they went out to get oil. The other said, we already got it. Yes. But when the wise got the oil, the foolish said, we are wrong. Yes. Said, now that y'all raised up and showed this great light and all this power, said, what we had, you put a crown. Yes. Said, we ain't got no light. Said, give us to this Holy Ghost. Bride said, too late. Yes. Now, that bride is the pattern. In other words, now, if you women, as Brother Brown said, you're going to make a dress, right? You buy the goods. That's the people, right? You lay the goods down, and you take the scissors, and you cut out your pattern. 
Right? Amen. Now, you take the pattern to make the dress out of it. That's the bride. Yes. God takes the remnant, yes. see, of the pattern, the bride, yes. leaves it here on earth. Yes. Now, watch you. The dragon is wrathful at the woman, right? Yes, she goes in rapture. Right. The bride, the church, the true church, the true bride goes in rapture. Amen. Now, he goes, he can't make persecution against her, can he? No. No. He can't kill her, can he? No. Glory to God, he ain't going to touch the pattern. No. So, well, if he can't get the pattern, he'll get the rim. Amen. 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 Huh? Amen. Now, but he was really mad at the bride. Yes, you are. Oh, hallelujah, you wanted the bride, but the bride didn't want to let her get so, so what he do? What's he do? Well, he just makes war with the remnant. Right? Of her seed. Well, look, looks to me like you got something to do, children. I mean, you can't have a remnant until you become the pattern. In other words, the foolish virgins can't be the seed of the pattern until the pattern's cut out. Right? Looks to me like that the pattern, the bride, the wise virgin, is going to put a seed in the foolish virgin. Huh? And the pope, the beast, is going to begin to make war with her, and not only her, but listen to this, the remnant of the seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Not only will he pour out his wrath upon the Jews, the 144,000, but he'll pour it out upon the remnant, the foolish virgin, and the 144,000. He'll begin to make war with the saints. Thank God we won't be here. Oh, what time that'll be? Yes, sir. When they'll be hunted down like dogs. Hunted down like dogs. Treated lower than animals. Persecuted in every conceivable way of persecution that they can think of, they'll do it. Amen. Kill you thinking that they'll be doing God a favor. Yeah. Of course, I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking about the women. Yeah. And the 144,000. What a horrible time that's going to be for the Jews. Yeah. Yeah. But I am so thankful for a merciful God because he's got something to help them. Thank God that God, merciful God, always yes. has something to help his people yes. in a time of great trouble. Yes. And when the beast is ruling and reigning in this bloody reign of 42 months, as he begins to kill and martyr and rampant through the saints, making war with them, overcoming them, but they're hanging, them Jews is hanging on yes. Yes. to the commandments of God. And not only that, not only that, but they have got a testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes. There, oh, here it comes. There has been something took place that opened up the eyes to the Messiah. Because they now have, not only did they keep the commandments of God, but now they have the testimony of the Lord Jesus. And then, you know what? God gives them somebody to help them. He calls in a Moses and Elijah. I, I imagine they'll be welcome, don't you? Imagine what a time they're going through. And then, uh, now, here's where I see that. This is just Brother Bob. Now, it's always been asked, is Moses and Elijah going to come down out of heaven? Because, uh, I know Brother Brandon said Moses didn't die, but he did die. 
Yes. Right, Brother Bram, one night preached Elijah as a little teeny fella, about 130 pounds and about five foot seven, with them big gates on his shoulders. The next night he preached in another state and another place and preached him as a great, big, powerful man. So he, like, he just one night preaching to make points that Moses died. Uh, Moses didn't die. He said Moses didn't die, so he'll come back again and finish his ministry. Well, now, so, and then I heard him say different. Sure, I, I heard him say that, and then I heard him say, no, I don't believe it'll be Moses come back down to earth. Amen. said, I believe it'll be his spirit upon another man. Amen. He said, now the reason I believe, Brother Brown said, the reason I believe that, does not the scripture say, over in King said, does not the spirit of Elijah rest on Elijah? Yeah. Now look here, here is the 144,000. Something has taken place that has given them the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, they have received the baptism of the Holy Amen. Ghost. Amen. They have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they are not going they are not going along with the Pope at all. They're not going along with the Pope. Because they're keeping the commandments of God and they're not the testimony of Jesus. So now the Pope is mad at them. He's mad at him, see? And so then he starts killing him. And all oh, looks bad for him. Looks like nobody's going to be left alive. Then immediately when the beast, when the beast begins to martyr and kill 144,000, immediately them two men raise up. They walk in there with the power of God. And brother, they begin to smite the earth. They begin to smite the people with plagues. They begin to cause uh, great, terrible uh, things to take place. They speak and say, to let the heavens rise, not a drop of rain fall on any crop in the whole world. But the heavens rise. Right. They begin to call plagues down upon the nation. And oh my, they don't want the Catholics just staggered here. You don't know what... The, what, what is this here? Yes. What was great power these two men got here? And they begin to bring plagues upon the people. Begin to do great uh, uh, wonders in the heavens. And great uh, climatic changes. Yes. And, uh, the, and when they send anybody after them, the Bible said a power went out of their mouth. Yes. Just yes. burned them up. Yes. Well, they sent out uh, 50 from the World Council Church. And beat just go and so sent them out. And then two prophets were sitting over there near the Mount of Olives. And they said to say, uh, brethren, would you come down to the, we've got a little meeting down here we'd like to attend. Uh, uh, thou man of God. And they said, if we be men of God, let fire come down to heaven and burn all of you. Burn them up. Fire consumed out of the mouth, burnt the enemies up. That's talking about power. That's power. I always say, Brother Bob, sure the Lord wouldn't do that if he did it before. Amen. He did. Listen, they're going to know that, the brother and sister, they're going to know that Jehovah God ain't asleep somewhere. Amen. He's done, he's done shook the earth with a bride, and now he begins to do even greater things with Moses and Elijah. Amen. Begins to do even greater things. And the Bible says, well, let's just read it. We better read it and just talk about it. Let's read verse uh, 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 Revelation 11, 3. Now here, we're in the last three and a half years now. How many understand that? Amen. Revelation 11, and verse 3. Yeah. I, now, see, here we are. Yeah. See what a time of trouble in? Here's this beast just begin to martyr and kill. Us. And all at once, here comes on the scene, Moses and Elijah. Yeah. Now, I've got something for you. Now, just, I mean, food for thought. Now, where did them men come from? What was that? Yes! They, nothing, said, nothing said about it until first the beast begins to make war with the saints. <laughs> then when they begin to make war with the saints, then they rise on the scene. <laughs> Don't you see, that's the way God always has them. Moses, now, to get, look here. Moses was all the time, nobody knew nothing about him, he was back up there with a few sheep. Amen. Back up there. Nobody knew. There was a prophet laying right up there in the mountain. Amen. They got in trouble down in the east. Amen. They began to kill him. Begin to beat him. Begin to uh, put pressure on him. Persecute him. Amen. They all begin to persecute him. Make more bricks. Beat him. Kill him. Amen. 
take their food away from them, everything. Amen. The Lord said to the prophet, said, go down, people, and serve them. And when the 144,000, see, there wasn't any trouble there. They had a time where they could, glory to God, they had a time where they could have their own sacrifice. They could worship the Lord. Now, see how the things come here? They could have their own sacrifice. They could worship the Lord. Is that right? But now, all at once, things change. The Pope now comes in the temple and goes up there and sits down where the Messiah is supposed to be. And begins to declare himself as the backer of Christ of the earth. Setting where he not ought to sit. And then he says, you'll worship the way that we see it, or you'll not worship at all, or we'll, or we'll kill you. And they said, well, we'll keep the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Huh? So they begin to, as they begin to martyr, now, here sets on the scene two prophets. <laughs> God has always got something there for the people. And if it's that way with the Israel, want to be the same way with the bride? When, when, the, when the pressure gets to come down and it looks like, oh, what are we going to do? He'll have something here. Y'all He'll have something. Now, oh my, isn't that like a breath from heaven? Here comes two little brothers in with a pile of the Holy Ghost. They got such power that if anybody tries to lay hands on them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and burns up their enemies. They, they, have the, they have the spoken word. They have the spoken word. And the third full power that's on the bride, they got the same thing. Whatever they say with their mouth, that's the way it is. And they begin to dry up the water. They begin to dry up the rivers, dry up the water. Amen. Begin to do all kinds of great, tremendous miracles. Yes, and they shake the Pope up. Yes. They begin to shake things up. Yes. Yes. Where did them brothers come from? Uh -huh. They didn't do nothing the first three and a half years. No. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Where did they learn their message? How did they know that they was to speak the word round? How did where did they where did they get that? Where did they get that message from? How did they know that they could speak the word? How did they know that was about the power and all these things? But the deliverer must have come out of Zion. Must have been a deliverer come out of Zion. Well, let's just say it be like this. Let's say that the bride takes the message when the last member comes into the body. The blood leaves the mercy seat for the Gentiles. The bride passes through Israel. Amen. Amen demonstrates the power of God to the Jews. That's right. That's right. Preaches the message in Israel. Amen. And that message will fall into the hands of two men. Yes. That, are, yes. that God will start to deal with when the Spirit of God, now he's not dealing with them yet, but when the Spirit of God begins to deal with the Jews, he'll begin to deal with those two men. That's right. They will receive and experience a call of a prophet. Amen. But then it'll take some time for them to get the message. Amen. Lord, Amen. Now, you just can't come into the revelation just get it overnight, right? Now, I'm, I'm just kind of, the reason I say this is because this is the way God's always done it. I've never seen him ever bring anybody down out of heaven. I've never seen, if, well, the way God moves, just moves the moves so natural and so simple. That if you don't watch out, he can lose off and left you and you didn't know it. Amen. Amen. They said, the, the disciple said to Jesus, said, well, you're going away. He said, wasn't Elijah supposed to come? Uh, yeah. My Lord, he just been there and burnt the earth up for about six months. Amen. He said, wasn't Elijah supposed to come? Yeah. Jesus looked at him, what? 
He <laughs> says, brother, Elijah's already come. Yeah. Now, if they didn't know who Elijah was, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was pointing all the time, said he was the Christ to be right after me, and must have really got Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The brother said, wasn't Elijah supposed to come? And here is the man that John said would be right after him, and they don't even know John John. Let alone they've known who he was. <laughs> he must have went something like this. The life has come already, brother, and you don't know it. Then he's going to do to me what you've done to him. So, I believe it just be naturally like God begins to be with the Jews. Now, notice God is not dealing with Jews yet. You can handle facts. You can do anything you want to. And I think the best thing that ever happened is for Golden Year to put out of Israel all the missionaries. Good and good. Get them all out. I, 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 hope, I hope you put them all out next week. I hope there's not a one left in there. Yes. So when the, when the bride gets there, they'll have a nice clean seat. <laughs> like the man in the, the garden tomb, I think he would have come up here and preached for us if he took a real liking to me, but I didn't want to say nothing. But he's wanting me to pray, seek the Lord, and ask the Lord to allow him to go to Congress to speak to the senators and everything. Uh, uh, you, you know, some great men, you know, because they come over there and he meets them, you know. And uh, he wanted me to pray uh, that uh, the Lord would allow him to see these great men so that they would put the squeeze on uh, the, the premier of Israel, to, uh, the, that they put the squeeze on her uh, if she wants jets and she wants help from Uncle Sam. Yeah. See, what, he, what he's talking about, a boycott. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, put the squeeze on her so... Uh, that she'll keep the missionaries there. Wow. Oh. Because he believes the Lord's saving all these Jews oh, through his ministry wow. and the ministry of the, uh, the hippies and all of the Jesus wow. movement there. Uh, I didn't say to him, I said, Lord God, I, I hope that they'll send them all out of here. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't even, how can they save the Jews when they're not even saved? <laughs> and he had to admit, when I got him on the word, on, he had to admit that wasn't like it was in the day of Pentecost. Amen. But we can see that Brother Branham made a statement that there will be some holy anointed prophet of God will go over to Israel with mighty signs and wonders and miracles and he will demonstrate the power of God and the Jews will say, that's what I'm looking for. Amen. And he said, and God will baptize 144,000 with the Holy Ghost and the rapture will come and the bride will go. Now, in another place, Brother Manor made this statement. He said, one of these days the Jews is going to recognize that the bride of Jesus Christ has the keys to the corn tree. So, we believe that it won't be long when God will put his power upon the Gentile bride, raise up a powerful Gentile church, and send that church through Israel, demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost, and those Jews will receive that, and see, because God will open up their eyes. Can you imagine what power will fall there? And they'll feel that spirit as you feel here. Feel that power? Why, well, just sweep them all right into it. They want, why, will this be a glorious thing? Now, God, now, let's just say it comes this way. And I believe that. We can see that one. Because we don't have too much scripture, but we'll just kind of put it together, you know. Amen. Now, when, when that happens, those two brethren will be there. Yes. We call them Moses and Elijah. I don't know what their, uh, their earthly name won't be Moses and Elijah. Then it may be Moshe dying. Right. It may be old Moshe dying. I don't know who they are. <laughs> so how do you know? <laughs> I tell you, it would be something if that one eyed general turned out to be Moses, wouldn't it? Well, I tell you, they have a spirit. But we don't know who they are. But God knows. But I do know this that whoever that is, and whoever they are, how many goes to Israel, 
However that comes, when they hear that message and see that power demonstrated in the bride, brother, they'll receive that hook, line, and sinker. And there, when the Spirit, listen, when the Spirit comes upon those two men, God right then will show them that they've got a ministry. He'll show them right there that they've got that ministry, you see. And then they will get into the Word. They'll get in the Word, and they'll begin to pack the Word down inside of it, and they'll begin to get ready. But they ain't got no ministry yet. But they'll begin to get ready. They'll be right in there worshiping and, and having a great time with 144,000. Now notice here, those 144,000 are preaching the gospel. They're doing all the great wonderful acts of the Holy Ghost. But the foolish virgins ain't doing nothing. They ain't got no power, ain't got no anointing, and they know that the gospel now has gone to the Jews and they're, and they're in trouble. They're weeping and wailing and gnashing their teeth because they missed the rest. How many seeds of picture? Now let's read a little further and we'll close. Now watch here, verse 3. Now at this time we're talking about this, and I will give power unto my two witnesses. Now notice here, here's where they're going to receive power for their ministry. I will give power unto my two witnesses, that's those two prophets, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's three and one half years. Yes. Yes. Just exactly the same yes. length of time that this beast begins to rule and reign with this yes. persecution to the same. Absolutely. Is that right? Yes. Cold and sackcloth. But don't look to me like they had a knitted suit on doing it. Clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees yes. and the two candlesticks Amen. standing before the God of the earth. Oh, you wait till you hear what I preach on the inner veil. Oh. I have to bite my tongue fast than that. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemy. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. What do you think that's going to do to the church world when they know that there's two men over in Israel, that if you go up there and try to take a hold of them, fire just comes out of their mouth and just burns you to ashes. Hallelujah. Now you're talking about Jehovah's moving Jehovah. Then they'll remember in the Bible. They'll remember in the Bible where Elijah of old, when they come out there, king, the king yeah. sent out there to him and sent up 50 servants and, and that captain come out there and said, Art thou the man of God that prophesied over the king? He said, I am he. He says, Come down from that mountain, thou man of God, and come down to the king with me. He said, If I be a man of God, let fire come down out of heaven and burn you up in your fifty. And the Bible said, fire come down to heaven, burn up the captain and his fifty. Well, the captain and the fifty never come back, and King wondered where he's at, sent out somebody. They go out there and look, said he should have been back with a word from the prophet to them. And they went back there, and all they found was his ashes. And you know, the king says, go tell him to come. So the next captain went up there and said, hey, thou man of God. Say, come down from that mountain and come down here to the king with me. Elijah said once again, said, if I be. Yes. You know, they may have been doubt of before. Yes. Said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down out of heaven, burn you up, captain, and you're 50, and fire come down to heaven, burn up the captain and his 50. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Now, he's the same Yesterday, today, and forever, he can still put fire on you and burn you right to an ice. I believe what God says. Now, if you think that God ain't moving in this last day, brother, you better take another look at the Bible. Let me tell you something. Don't you know if the Bible said that these two witnesses was given power to prophesy for 42 months? Don't you know as bad as the, the, the Catholic Church was killing the 144,000 and martyring the foolish virgins by the thousands? Right. 
So why didn't they grab a hold of him and kill him? Because they was afraid of him. Afraid of him. Afraid of him. You talking about a minister? Oh, brother Bob, I like to stay around and see that, not me. I don't want to go on. How they want to go on? Let the other brother take care of that. But look at that. They must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. They have power over water to turn them to blood. Ain't going to be no water to drink. No time. No time. Turn every stream and every river to blood. Sinus hasn't been able to do that, has he? They've never been able to make any blood yet. No. Man, here these two prophets turn the whole river to blood. Turn all the streams to blood. I say, is there anything too hard for God? No. no. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Amen. But he couldn't kill them till God was through with them. Amen. Amen. I guess they thought they'd done a great thing in. God was through with the brethren. They finished the prophesying. God was through with them. And now he lets the Pope kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. We know that's Jerusalem. Is that right? Amen. And they of the people and kindred tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the grave. And they that, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, they of the earth, brother, they shook the earth so bad, and the people were shook up so bad over their prophesying and turned the waters to blood and all these plagues that when they heard that the Catholics had killed them, the Pope, the beast, yeah. Amen. they were thrilled to death. Oh, yeah. Rejoice. Yeah. They're killed. The prophets are dead. Yeah. That's something to rejoice over, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, can't you see? Can't you see like people say, oh, if you'd raise the dead, I believe it. You wouldn't? Oh. Here's these two prophets over there doing such tremendous miracles, you can't even hardly comprehend the things like that. Yeah, but did they repent? No. No, no when, they, when, they, when the Pope killed them, when the beast killed them, the people of the world rejoiced. Yeah. And not only that, said that they shall make merry and shall send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. The spirit of God of life entered into them. Yes. Yes. Where was they at? Everybody was looking on the prophets. They were looking on the prophets. They was looking on the carcass that they dwelt in. But they had gone on to heaven. Right? They had gone on to heaven and their body began to swell up, began to corrupt. Three days and a half laying in that hot sun in Israel. Huh? Amen. Well, let's say it's hot in the summertime. We don't know where it's winter or summer. But anyway, they're laying in the street three days and a half. And all at once, as the people are watching them, let's say they're all watching on television. Yes. Said Kendrick. Nations and all people of the world was looking at him. Huh? That would be a big thing, wouldn't it? Because the satellites, you know, play that all over the world. The whole world is looking in on the prophets, you know. Newscasters, the prophets, men still laying in the streets, having burned yet. Everybody's making merry, drinking and having a big party. And all at once, all at once, now they raise up in the street. I about imagine an old guy set the high ball down in, wouldn't he? Look at that. Raise right up. Huh? Everybody looking at it? Oh, my. Uh, the old boy just comes out back to normal. There they're walking around. Hugging one another's neck. Hugging everybody. Huh? 
Maybe praising the Lord and saying how maybe, maybe shout a little bit and glorify God. Boy, imagine everybody be scared. If I was on this side, I'd be scared with you. My old mouth would hang open. My what little hair I got would stand up. I mean, let's just look at this thing like it is. Here's the the Pope has finally managed to kill these guys, and all the world is rejoicing. Everybody's looking in on. Them. Yeah. They've been laying there in the newspapers packing, the radios packing. Yeah. And you know what? Everybody's looking on. And the Bible said the spirit of life there and it raised out of it. Bodies returned back to normal. Now what happened? God just let their spirit and soul come back down out of heaven, come right down their body. Yeah. And they come right down their body and raised out of it. Amen. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Walked around and began to say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Everybody looking on? Ah. They're just flabbergasted. You know what? A beautiful voice speaks out of heaven. Glory! Say, brother dear, come up here where I am. The Bible said all the voice spoke out of heaven. And said, come up here. Now, not only do they have a miracle, but God raises them back up again right in front of their eyes. But now I hear his own voice just sweetly says, brother, come on up here. And they just walk right up in the heaven. And everybody looking on. Brother and sister, if, if they ever needed to repent, they need to repent then. Well, I'm glad we serve that kind of a God. Aren't you? See what he's going to do for the little Jews? In fact, here we are now before that can happen. And that's not very long it's going to be happening. Here we're waiting here tonight. Oh my. Before that happens, and it's going to happen because we just read it out of this book. Is that right? The next thing is for God to pour out the Holy Ghost upon you. Just as those two men will play their part, the 144,000 are going to play their part. You and I have got to find your place and play your part. And here we are now. Getting ready to act out our little end time promise. Brothers and sisters, we ought to be awful happy. Let's thank him if our sisters will come. Oh, my. I'm so glad that our God is so great. Just so wonderful. Let's sing that little song, number 98 in this little book. If you got there to wait upon the Lord, that's what I want to do, wait upon the Lord. The mere strength, mount up as wings of an eagle. They that wait upon the Lord Jesus. in your mortal flesh. Amen. In flesh, blood, and bone, deity is to be tabernacled in you. And you now have present tense, eternal life dwelling in you because you have heard his word. You are believing his promise. That's salvation. To believe in his promise. Yes, sir. And we're waiting for the fullness of the God. Yes, the Jews can't make any move, can't receive anything 
until you receive power for food. And as, as you have freely received from the Lord by grace, ye will freely give it out to the Jews. When you see the Gentiles refuse. Oh, God. And I love this song, the last verse. And he shall reign and rule over your fondest dream. The most fondest dream that you can have tonight of how the Lord loves you and is going to bless you in the days to come. He'll rule over that fondest dream. Because Jesus is here on earth today for one reason. And that's to give you your heart to God. It'll be our arise very soon when the Lord, it'll be given into the hands of his servant to give unto you the desires of your heart. The order of our will be, let's wait and see. You remember back and say, oh Lord, here it is now right in her hands right before. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Give me the desires of my heart. You that believe his word, you put right into your hands the desires of your heart. Maybe it'll be a loved one you ask for. Maybe it'll be healing or salvation for somebody. But just think what the Lord is, is wanting to do for us. And to think tonight, we come in here maybe tired and weary from this morning service and the trials this week and working hard. Would you come in and sit down and you tell people? And he wants to do this tonight for you. He wants to do it now for you. God help us to come to the place where we can be just in the right frame of mind. You know what happened tonight? We don't say, oh, this, no, no, it's here now. It's here now. Just we got to get in the right shape. Frame of mind. Just think of the presence that you felt today. Service tonight, service this morning. That supernatural presence that she felt is what moved up on the water. Separated. Moved up on the land. That was the spirit that come up on Samson when he rent the line and two. Think of those things. The God of heaven comes down and honors you with his presence. Honored me with his presence. That's the greatest thing. Why well, I, I can hardly comprehend. It. He come down and honor us with his presence. Now think, here he's tell, told us all these things that he wants to do for us. Why well, he just start to fill us with all the heart? <laughs> but loving with all the heart and all the soul and all the mind. Let's sing that last verse there again. I'm the Lord that reigns the queen. make a decision about going down to Brother Ruddle, and uh, I haven't told him just exactly when I'll be there yet, but I wish I'd pray for him. But I tell you, I just don't like to even leave home. I don't like going anywhere. So, sometimes you just have to do things you don't like to do. It's not that I love Brother Ruddle and touch the saints down there, but it's just until the Lord sends me out, if I go preach. Trinidad, or I go preach down by the road, so I just have to make myself go. So y'all pray for me. Well,
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. In other words, he said, if I wasn't in the world, there wouldn't be no revelation. There wouldn't be no light. Now, he took that revelation and he gave it to his followers. Said, now ye are the light of the world. Now ye are the light of the world. Shine. The prophet said, rise and shine. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon me. Brother and sister, that's your eye. That's the eye for the bride. Yes, right. Rise up with the revelation and begin to shine at abroad. Yes, the hour is close at hand. We keep saying it. But like Abraham, close at hand. Yes. The hour is close at hand. When the glorious light of the revelation that you have shall fill the earth to catch the entire bride of Christ. How many believe it's amen? Yes. We'll walk in the light as he's in the light. So we meet one another again Wednesday. May God bless you, be with you, keep you during the week. And don't just look down at your feet where you're walking. Don't let the pressures of your job, your school, or whatever you're doing, your housework for the women, but don't let nothing stand in between your soul and your Savior. And just keep your eyes on the lateness of the hour, soon coming capstone, and set all your affection upon things above. And may we love one another, and may we strive for the tr tremendous victory in the divine love of the Lord Jesus. That's what I want. That I can come to a place where I can love my enemies. So I can love my neighbor like I love myself. And that's far beyond me. So that takes God to do that. But that's when we'll have tremendous victory, when we can love our enemies. Love those that misuse us, persecute us, speak evil of us. And we want that victory. Amen. The love of God. Now we're here to bow and rise forward. I'd like to ask Brother Bruce to dismiss the congregation. May the Lord bless Brother Bruce and his little wife. Yes. Drive over here to New York State to fellowship with us. And God bless each one of you and be with you. Strengthen and encourage you during the week. Father God, we thank you for this Our heart will lift it up in this book, thank you. Lord God, praise and give me praise. Lord God. Father God, I ask that you receive with each of these things. Yes. The power, Lord God, help them and lead them and guide them until you return to them. Father God, I ask you to be gracious to you. Take that lovely name of the Lord Jesus with you wherever you go. Yeah. Yeah.